Besiege is pretty cool. It's an early access building game available on Steam. A slick menu here. There are multiple areas, only one of which is currently active, Ypsilon. And there are 15 zones. So it's a building game where you construct siege engines uh, and then have to complete some sort of task in each zone. It could be destroying something or moving something. One interesting thing I noticed going through this is that as you complete each zone, uh, it begins the next zone with whatever you had built previously. And uh, that got me thinking, could you create a single design, a single siege engine, uh, that could complete all the zones? So I think I've done that, and now uh, let's take a look. So this is the first zone, and our siege engine, cleverly named all zones. Looks like this. So what we'll do here is we'll go through each zone, talk about the requirements of that zone, how those requirements affect the design, and what I've tried to do here is put something together that minimally meets the requirements for all the zones. Not necessarily going for the lowest part count or anything like that, but a lot of extra design and, and basically trying to accomplish uh, all the zone tasks uh, with a minimum of, of features. So overall, it's a uh, it's a wheeled vehicle. Uh, it has tank style controls. So I've got the wheels mapped to uh, one and four on the left side on my numpad, and five and two on the other side. So you can uh, spin in place like a tank. And then we also have this uh, throwing arm, kind of a ballista configuration, uh, powered by these uh, rubber bands and explosive. And we'll talk about some more of the details of the design as we go through. But this first zone uh, only requires that we destroy this uh, cottage here. And that could be accomplished several ways, but uh, probably the simplest and the one the uh, tutorial sort of leads you through is putting some wheels on something and going over there and driving over it. So that is exactly what we will do. Ta-da! Zone 2. Similar objective. The only new requirement here is that the building is elevated a little bit and also off to the side. So uh, that requires either some height on your uh, ram, if you're taking that approach, or some kind of projectile. And uh, since we have a projectile, we'll use that here. And also a little bit of aiming, so I'm going to tap it over there, and uh, we'll try this out. Not too shabby. So, reach insignia. So, nothing to destroy here. We just need to survive over to uh, over to this area here. And what that means for our design is that uh, we need it to be steerable. We need it to uh, not be too large because there are mines here or we need some way to clear those mines so we're going to do a little bit of both since we have this uh, explosive on board we can start out by attempting to detonate a couple of these mines which we can do and then we're maneuverable enough with our tank controls even though we're a fairly large vehicle to uh, inch our way forward and avoid both the other mines and those burnt trees, which will set us on fire. And since we have this uh, plow feature on front, we can uh, do things like this. Oh, we have a sheep friend attached to our uh, grabber. It's unfortunate for him. And there we go. So, this is the first zone uh, where we meet some resistance. 
we're supposed to destroy basically the structures from the first two zones uh, but there's this wall in the way we don't have to destroy it but we do have to get around it or through it or something like that and these archers here uh, can destroy our vehicle their arrows are effective against all the wooden uh, features I think these plows will uh, deflect them but uh, let's just watch and see what happens if we don't move and let the uh, let the arrow guys go here uh, so you can see the woods breaking down. We can take a few hits, uh, but not too many. Yep, see now our throwing arm is disabled and pretty soon we'll be dead in the water. Also, the arrows can detonate the bomb, which is pretty dangerous. So, uh, to get rid of these guys, uh, we could either try to run around them, use our speed and maneuverability to simply avoid them, but uh, it's pretty easy to take them out. We have an explosive and there's this explosive here. And uh, all we need to do is uh, toss this over there. And avoid any falling, burning bodies. So, with them out of the way, fairly simple to go take out these structures. Now before, when we had an elevated structure like that, we took it out with our explosive, which we used already, but uh, getting some double duty out of our throwing arm here, we can use it as sort of a uh, hammer to take out that taller building. Alright, so in this zone there are no structures to destroy, but we have to kill 90% of everybody. This is probably one of the more challenging zones for this design because I've not put a lot of armor on. There's two kinds of armor <coughs> excuse me uh, there's two kinds of armor available. Uh, there's these metal plates which are heat resistant and I believe impervious to arrows and there are these wooden panels which uh, are resistant to arrows but uh, do no good against fire. Uh, I've left the metal armor off because the weight added prevents us from doing some things that we need to do in later levels. And um, the wood armor we could use, but I don't think it's really necessary. This might take a couple tries, but uh, this is doable. There's a little bit of luck in whether or not uh, one of these archers gets a lucky shot and blows this bomb up. But uh, strategy here is basically to take these archers out as fast as possible. The rest of these guys really can't uh, damage you. Uh, they do get underfoot a lot, so part of the idea with this design is that the plow is kind of your primary uh, melee weapon, if you will, and unfortunately, they're mounted a little bit high still, and uh, these guys can get under wheel and get you bogged down, which is very dangerous if you still have uh, archers after you. So, let's give it a shot. We'll attempt to uh, take these archers out, and we'll use a little technique I'll talk about later to try to get some more range uh, out of this throwing arm, so let's give this a try or two uh, and see what happens. And I'll press the wrong button. There we go. So we did not take out any of the arrow troops. So at this point, if we try to run over that entire crowd, we will definitely get bogged down. So we're going to make an attempt here to uh, run around them. And we'll just charge straight into those arrow guys, see if we can take them out. And we ran into an explosive, so you can see how dangerous those are. Let's give that another shot, and we'll take another shot at taking out the arrow guys quickly as well. Oh, and you see there, the arrows were able to detonate the explosive in midair. Uh, interestingly, We got it anyway, because uh, so many guys burned up. So we'll call that a victory. We still did it. And, you know, an interesting challenge would be, could you do this in such a way that you know, your vehicle always survived? Um, that'd make it more interesting. That's not necessarily what we're doing right now. But, uh, yeah, that might be something for a, a future challenge. All right, so this one, nothing to destroy, but we need to move these two... Uh, spheres over into this area, and we're pretty well equipped for that. Uh, the sphere on the left 
uh, we need to basically just drive into and push over there. This one um, could pose a bit of a challenge, but we have uh, two ways we can handle that. Um, we can throw our bomb over there uh, and knock it off, but uh, since we have the capability, we'll get rid of this bomb, first of all. It's kind of dangerous to drive around with it. So let's go take care of the one on the left, and we can use our uh, scoop here to push this guy over. Very good. And then we have this uh, have this grabber, which is not, like I said, not required for this level. In fact, there's only one zone uh, where this is required. Uh, but since we have it, we'll use it here as well. Get backed up on this guy, give him a grab, pick him up a little bit. Okay, we've got this guy in tow. And there we go. Okay, so this is interesting because, well, let me just show you what happens here. This can be destroyed by the cannons that you can uh, attach, or by ramming, or by this explosive. But if we get too close to it, it starts to shoot us. Uh, pretty effectively, actually, although it's shooting at that, uh, happens to be shooting at that uh, uh, scoop there, which is not effectual. Uh, but to give you an idea of how this would work, we basically just need to throw this bomb a lot further than we normally can. And um, what we can do, because this vehicle's fairly fast uh, and has the uh, suspension, each of the trucks is separately suspended, uh, we can do a thing where we roll backwards and then forwards quickly, and that sort of uh, tips the entire vehicle back and gives us a little more range. We uh, get an earlier release angle on the throwing arm. So uh, we'll try that. There's a possibility that this thing might shoot the uh, bomb out of the air, but uh, we'll see what happens. So something might get a little closer. A little aiming. Oh, we're starting to get shot at. Back off a little bit. And... Oh, we didn't quite get there. Let's try it again. There we go. So yeah, you can see there we just roll back and then forward and get the angle and we can get a little uh, extra throw. So this one would seem to have an easier requirement than the previous one, but the difference is this kind of stone structure can only be destroyed by explosives. So we might have used a cannon in the previous uh, which would have made it a little bit easier, but that's not available to us here, so uh, we're well equipped to deal with this kind of thing, and we can simply throw our bomb in there, and we're done. So this is probably the most challenging level for this design, and that's largely owing to the lack of armor that we have. But there's two cannons, uh, these guys, which are just really a, a roadblock, and then these archers. This cannon's not too dangerous because where it's sitting, it tends to hit, uh, tends to hit these scoops, which are uh, impervious to it, I believe. Uh, this one is a problem because it can hit superstructure, and then of course the archers are a problem. So what I'm going to try to do is, as quickly as possible, take this out with our explosive, run this guy over, run these guys over, and then we can deal with the rest at our leisure. We need to destroy 90% uh, of all these objects. So uh, let's give this a shot. And I overthrew that. So we might still stand a chance. Take care of that guy. Oh, and we're coming apart pretty fast here. Cannon down. And archers down. So we're not in very good shape, but I think we actually can do this still. Go run over these tents and take care of these guys. So, how do we survive that? Well, let's look a little bit at our design. So, obviously none of the throwing arm or uh, superstructure is required for uh, our mobility. Uh, that's all in these, uh, these trucks down here that have all the wheels. 
and we've got some braces, which is basically what's holding us together at this point. You can see this uh, entire front wooden part's gone, but uh, got a brace here, which actually that one's disconnected, and then a brace under here, and what we're trying to do there is as much as possible get rigidity around this uh, central axis. Probably the weakest part of this design structurally is that the left half is not very well connected to the right half, but that's sort of uh, required by having this arm in the middle. Uh, the arm will actually pass right through uh, these kind of strut uh, pieces, but I didn't like how that looked, so I've got one here and one here kind of realistically where they would uh, not interfere with the arm's motion. And uh, yeah, so we got beat up pretty good, but we managed to, managed to do it. So, uh, this is the kind of material that can be destroyed by cannon, but we don't have any. Uh, the other thing here is there's a wind going, so once again we really just need to throw it uh, kind of as hard as we can and maybe do a little bit of aiming, although it may not be necessary. So what I'm going to do is roll forward to get a little closer and then try that uh, try that sort of roll back, roll forward technique to get a little more loft on our bomb and uh, see if we can do this. Oh, I'm well, actually not sure what happened there. Let's try it again. Might have jostled the bomb a little bit too hard. It's pretty sensitive, yeah, I suspect that's what happened. So, got a piece of it there, or I think the wind was the problem. So let's steer a little bit to the right. And again, not quite. Let's try this again. And also not quite. right side is being pretty stubborn. Let's try it again here. A little more angle on it. That obviously wasn't thrown far enough. I think the wind might have caught us there, actually. Pushed us into the holder. Pushed the bomb into the holder, I should say. There we go. Just had to get a good throw. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we have again a structure that has to be taken on uh, with a bomb and some archers that are going to try to stop us. Um, they really can't do enough damage to keep us from throwing the bomb uh, in the amount of time that we can do it, but uh, they can detonate the bomb. So again, a little bit of luck and. Maybe a more robust design would be able to deliver that bomb without the archers interfering. Um, let's give it a shot here. I'm actually take their first volley for two. And that was not nearly thrown far enough. So we're going to have to do our uh, back and forth motion again to get a little lift on the bomb. And their arrows took it out. So you can see the issue. Again, the arrows. Let's be a little faster. Yeah, so we gave it some uh, lift, and we're quick enough to get there before the arrows could go by. So, uh, I mentioned earlier there's only one level where this guy is required, and this is it. Well, uh, whoa! <laughs> That's not going to work. Uh, the bomb is a liability. We'll get rid of it. And then we'll back up to one of these wooden planks. The objective is to deliver one to that raised platform. So that would require either we're able to drive up there, or uh, we can actually just set it up there with this arm, but since we have the ability to fling things, we'll do it just for fun. Aha. So, uh, nothing threatening us in this mission, just a bunch of sheep, which we have to kill 80% of. Uh, the challenge here is getting up on top of these platforms. So I had a design, another design, that uh, could do most of the zones, but really struggle with this one because it couldn't climb the hill. So uh, this, this design was a response to that, and we're able to do that. Uh, good ground clearance here, we've got this gap uh, below the uh, below the scoops, but 
more importantly, uh, this side is quite good at hill climbing. We even use the motion of the arm to help us uh, get up over uh, lips if we run into some trouble. So again, I'm going to just uh, kind of get rid of the bomb as quick as possible because it's more of a liability than help. And grab a couple sheep while we're down here and head over to the hill area, which I think we'll be able to climb this way. Yep. Oh. No problem there. Let's get up there. Yeah, so having the six sets of wheels and the suspension helps with that. And then I think we'll go in reverse to climb this guy and get our arm up out of the way. And actually drop the arm on the way up. That kind of helps to tip us over up on top of the hill. And the spinning seems to be the best way to take care of nearby sheep. A lot of times they manage to get in between the wheels there and find some safety, but that doesn't last too long. So the remainder of this is driving over sheep. Sheep will think twice before they cross us. So this is an interesting zone for trying to build a vehicle for all zones in that it uh, dictates some size requirements. So uh, there's this sort of raised platform we have to get up on and we have to touch each of these three zones. And then uh, there are some archers that are going to try to stop us in this bomb. So, relatively easily, we can get rid of those archers and then, I guess, break uh, part of our vessel here. Well, actually, I think we're still going to be okay, even though we have a bit of a problem there. Let's give it a shot. So, so you can imagine if your vehicle's much wider, or at least the wheelbase much wider than this path, you're going to have trouble with this one unless you built something that can jump or fly. There are parts for flying vehicles that haven't really tried that. And then you can see here, width's a little bit narrower still. And for some reason, that did not trigger. There we go. And there we go. And then, again, if you were trying to make a vehicle that could survive to the end of all these zones, uh, that bit there could be challenging. You might actually be better off to roll back down and go around, I suppose. So this is the final zone, and we have to destroy 60% of everything, which includes the stone, which can only be damaged uh, by the bomb, and these cottages and these guys. There are no archers, so uh, we're our own worst enemy here. Uh, it's basically about getting a good hit on the castle and then just running around and uh, messing everything else up. Not really no new no new requirements presented here, so let's go see what we can do against this castle. That wasn't very good at all. Uh, let's give that a shot again. Alright, and we'll try our long throw technique. A little bit better, not great. Uh, we're about halfway done with just the castles, you can see by that bar down there. And then if we run around and finish off some of these buildings, guys, that should finish it off for us. Got a piece of building on board we don't need. We'll let go of that. a couple buildings around back here. We can roll over all this debris. Don't need him. And we got it. That's it. All 15 zones 
uh, floating vehicle. So, uh, there's a sandbox area where you can sort of mess around with some different physics objects. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the vehicle again. So, yeah, what's important for a vehicle that can do all the zones is that uh, you need some survivability against arrows, and in my case it's basically just uh, dealing with them quickly. don't have a lot of armor. Uh, you need an explosive. There's no way around that. There's several objectives that can only be destroyed with an explosive. And to me, that means you know you should have you know if you're trying to go for a minimalist design, you sh should avoid having cannons uh, because the explosive can generally do uh, a job a cannon can do. Uh, you need some kind of mobility. There's uh, many zones you could finish with a stationary uh, engine, but uh, there are several that you can't. And in fact, uh, there are some size limitations based on some of those zones. You need something that can uh, climb some uneven terrain. And uh, for one zone, at least, you need uh, this grabbing ability, which is kind of interesting. A couple times I've, you know, gotten like a piece of uh, stone debris on the ground and was able to pick that up and throw it, uh, you know, as like an additional projectile beyond just the uh, the one shot explosive. Uh, that is the limitation of this design. It's just just the one shot. But as you can see, there was no case where you absolutely had to have two. And um, the suspension is uh, helpful for the, the, the all-terrain movement, but I don't think not required, but where it really comes in is in that ability to throw uh, the projectile a little further. Uh, I think we can actually watch this in slow motion, maybe. Uh, if I slow this down, uh, we can see what happens. You know, we start to roll backwards, and the thing kind of tips forward, and then we immediately hit forward and you see we rear up and then start the throw you can just see that we're getting a much earlier release angle than we would otherwise have uh, and that bomb will carry a lot further than it would have uh, without that maneuver so and it's interesting you see so we broke part of this here when we did that uh, I haven't quite figured out. It's sort of inconsistent. I'm sure it's just all the calculations on the springs and whatnot. Sometimes I can sit here and, and do that over and over again with no damage, and other times you'll get sort of a an unlucky one where you break something right off the bat. Uh, let's try it again. I'm kind of curious. Uh, take it off 100%. Get back to... Excuse me. Back to full speed. Let's slow it down again. enough and get a throw going. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the release better. Forward and oh you see what happened there. I, uh, I jogged it back and forth a little too much and it actually raised up and by the time I hit the the bomb raised up and by the time I hit the uh, button to start the throw it actually ran into the bomb. So that can be a problem. Let's try this one more time. Carefully turn around. Let's try this again. So reverse. Forward. Arm. Yeah, we get some pretty good distance out of that. So I've let go of the arm there, and you can see, yeah, that time it didn't break. And I think, again, because this entire uh, arm is uh, suspended, you know, that, that helps the, the shock absorption uh, from these springs uh, helps the, the force that we see when we uh, slam this arm back down on the, the back plate here. And that's the purpose of this uh, piece is to prevent the arm from falling all the way down to the ground and dragging on the ground, uh, which, as you can imagine, makes the bomb even more unstable. Uh, and then this is here, uh, this shock absorber as a as a bumper. If it wasn't there, the arm can rotate past vertical, and then uh, you can't get it back down unless you drive forward or otherwise jostle it back. 
And it also uh, gets a better release point. You can kind of imagine. Let's watch it go up again. So it releases right about there, but if it released too much further forward, uh, you actually just kind of shoot the bomb down in front of you ineffectually. Uh, so yeah, that is an engine that can do all 15 zones. And uh, that is Besiege. It's pretty cool.